Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 326. The Christian warrior, see him stand in all the armor of his God. The Spirit's sword is in his hand. His feet are with the gospel shod. Hymn number 326. scriptural this morning will be given by Shahidat from Maryland. I read from the book of Luke chapter 8. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only and she shall be made whole. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook.
our Father, who is in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 412. O dreamer, leave thy dreams for joyful waking. O captive, rise and sing, for thou art free. The Christ is here, all dreams of error breaking, unloosing bonds of all captivity. He comes to bless thee on his wings of healing, to banish pain and wipe all tears away. He comes anew to humble hearts revealing the mounting footsteps of the upward way. Hymn number 412.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion. And I can't believe it, but we had another really, really good one this morning. No, I can't believe it. <laughs> so if you missed it, please catch it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can also find it on our YouTube channel. We have a Sunday school for children here. It meets every Sunday at 11 a.m. And that Sunday school is actually available to anybody anywhere in the world. It has its own teleconference number. So any child anywhere can attend just by calling in. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers at all of our services. We had a really good Bible study yesterday, so our next one will be two weeks, October 24th, not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday, October 24. So check our website for the study questions, and please join us in two weeks, October 24, at 10 a.m. <clears throat> our website, our various websites in many different languages now, contain articles, hymns, songs, services, that are terribly inspiring and uplifting, and they are all free to the public. One of the uh, really good articles that's featured on our website uh, this week is one by Ralph Wagers entitled, Blessed are the Peacemakers. Very good article on what peace really is, as Jesus described to us. Blessed are the peacemakers by Ralph Wagers. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony from miscellaneous writings that attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Dave from Florida. Page 411. How grand your book, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures is. It is a translation of truth. No amount of money could buy the book of me if I could not get another. No matter what suffering comes, physical or mental, I have only to take Science and Health and almost invariably the first sentence brings relief. It seems to steady the thought. I do not think any student old enough to neglect reading it. When we think we are advanced far enough to let that book alone, then are we in danger. Mrs. Ellen P. Clark, Dorchester, Massachusetts. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page four of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, Are Sin, Disease, and Death Real? The golden text is from Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. The responsive reading is from Psalms. It's from Isaiah. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, shall we draw water out 
out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Craig will now read. The Bible, Jeremiah. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. Psalms He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Acts and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both of men and women. Insomuch they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda, was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, 
they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth, and kneeled down, and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. 1 Corinthians and Acts Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, it was determined that we should sail into Italy. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. Not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, and all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat, and we were all in the ship, two hundred, threescore, and sixteen souls. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled the fire and received us every one because of the present rain and of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Day Day from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. The physical healing of Christian science results now, as in Jesus' time, from the operation of divine principle, before which sin and disease lose their reality in human consciousness and disappear as naturally and as necessarily as darkness gives place to light and sin to reformation. Now, as then, these mighty works are not supernatural, but supremely natural. They are the sign of Emmanuel, or God with us, a divine influence ever present in human consciousness and repeating itself, coming now, as was promised aforetime, to preach deliverance to the captives of sin 
and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Obedience to the so-called physical laws of health has not checked sickness. Diseases have multiplied since man-made material theories took the place of spiritual truth. You say that indigestion, fatigue, sleeplessness cause distressed stomach and aching head. Then you consult your brain in order to remember what has hurt you when your remedy lies in forgetting the whole thing. For matter has no sensation of its own, and the human mind is all that can produce pain. I here present to my readers an allegory illustrative of the law of divine mind and of the supposed laws of matter and hygiene, an allegory in which the plea of Christian science heals the sick. Suppose a mental case to be on trial, as cases are tried in court. A man is charged with having committed liver complaints. The patient feels ill, ruminates, and the trial commences. The evidence for the prosecution being called for, a witness testifies thus. I represent health law. I was present on certain nights when the prisoner or patient watched with a sick friend. Although I have the superintendence of human affairs, I was personally abused on those occasions. I was told that I must remain silent until called for at this trial when I would be allowed to testify in the case. Notwithstanding my rules to the contrary, the prisoner watched with the sick every night in the week. When the sick mortal was thirsty, the prisoner gave him drink. During all this time, the prisoner attended to his daily labors, partaking of food at irregular intervals, sometimes going to sleep immediately after a heavy meal. At last, he committed liver complaints, which I considered criminal, inasmuch as this offense is deemed punishable with death. Therefore, I arrested mortal man in behalf of the state, namely the body, and cast him into prison. The judge asked, if by doing good to his neighbor, it is possible for man to become diseased, transgress the laws, and merit punishment. And Governor Mortality replies in the affirmative. Judge Medicine then proceeds to pronounce the solemn sentence of death upon the prisoner. Because he has loved his neighbor as himself, mortal man has been guilty of benevolence in the first degree, and this has led him into the commission of the second crime, liver complaint, which material laws condemn as homicide. For this crime, mortal man is sentenced to be tortured until he is dead. May God have mercy on your soul, is the judge's solemn peroration. Ah, but Christ, truth, the spirit of life, and the friend of mortal man can open wide those prison doors and set the captive free. Swift on the wings of divine love, there comes a dispatch. Delay the execution. The prisoner is not guilty. Consternation fills the prison yard. Some exclaim, it is contrary to law and justice. Others say, the law of Christ supersedes our laws. Let us follow Christ. After much debate and opposition, permission is obtained for a trial in the court of spirit, where Christian science is allowed to appear as counsel for the unfortunate prisoner. The counsel's earnest, solemn eyes, kindling with hope and triumph, look upward. Then Christian science turns suddenly to the Supreme Tribunal and opens the argument for the defense. The prisoner at the bar has been unjustly sentenced. His trial was a tragedy and is morally illegal. Watching beside the couch of pain, 
in the exercise of a love that is the fulfilling of the law, doing unto others as ye would that they should do unto you. This is no infringement of law, for no demand, human or divine, renders it just to punish a man for acting justly. The only jurisdiction to which the prisoner can submit is that of truth, life, and love. If they condemn him not, neither shall judge medicine condemn him. And I ask that the prisoner be restored to the liberty of which he has been unjustly deprived. The attorney, Christian Science, then read from the Supreme Statute Book, the Bible, certain extracts on the rights of man, remarking that the Bible was better authority than black. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court with benign and imposing presence, comprehending and defining all law and evidence, explained from, this, explained from his statute book, the Bible, that any so-called law which undertakes to punish aught but sin is null and void. The jury of spiritual senses agreed at once upon a verdict and there resounded throughout the vast audience chamber of spirit the cry, Not guilty. Then the prisoner rose up regenerated, strong, free. We noticed as he shook hands with his counsel, Christian science, that all sallowness and debility had disappeared. His form was erect and commanding, his countenance beaming with health and happiness. Divine love had cast out fear. Mortal man, no longer sick and in prison, walked forth, his feet beautiful upon the mountain, as of one that bringeth good tidings. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 30. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, 
Neath which our spirits blend like brother birds that soar and sing and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. Hymn number 30.
Let's now sing hymn number 370. We are hid with Christ forever in the Father's holy plan. In this pure eternal union, we behold the perfect man. And we know that sin can never overthrow the sacred rod of dominion over evil. We are hid with Christ in God. 
hymn number 370. from the Christian Science Textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. Amen. 